Now we end with naming stars. How do we name stars? Well, if a star has a very famous history behind it and it's a very bright star, it will usually have a common name. Kind of, that would be kind of equivalent to our nickname. Let's say if, some, if I, I'm a very common person and then pers people call me some nickname, uh, that'll be kind of like the common name we give to stars. And those are usually in Arabic. Okay, they come from Arabic words because the Arabs in the Middle Ages had their Renaissance, they had a lot of astronomy, and they gave the stars, the bright stars, their famous names. For example, the star that I keep referring to, Betelgeuse, its root word comes from the word Yad al Jauza, which means armpit of Orion. Remember, I said it's the, the armpit of Orion the hunter. So that's the name Betelgeuse comes from that. Aldebaran comes from a word meaning the follower from Arabic word. And if we look at this chart, we can keep looking at other examples. You see the names here that are all caps? If a name is in all cap, it's a, the name of the constellation, Corona Borealis. But the, the word that's not all cap, Alfeka, that's the name of the word, uh, the, the, the name of the star, in, and it comes from Arabic, al -Faka. So al qaid Elioth, Mizar, Etamin. You can kind of see that they, they do sound very Arabic sounding names. Kaus Austria, um, so the ones pretty much that are not all caps, Alfard, Pollux, Capella, and so on. Most of those are, um, come from Arabic root words. Now, if I want to name a star, official name, that would be kind of like my official name will be my first name and my last name. My last name tells me who, which family I belong to. My first name tells me my n name of my, you know, whoever my parent uh, named me. And, uh, and then my last name tells me my family. So that's kind of the official name of a star. Okay, so Betelgeuse is the common name. What would be the, the actual name of Betelgeuse? Here's how we would name it. We would name Betelgeuse Alpha Orionis. The, this way of naming a star is very useful because it already quickly tells you which constellation it belongs to. Alpha Orionis. You see? Al Orionis means what? It's the genitive case of Orion, okay? So basically we're saying here uh, Greek letter followed by the name of the constellation which hosts the star in the genitive case ending. Remember when I was showing you the names of the constellations and then the second row was the genitive case. Now am I going to require you to know the genitive case of all 88 constellations? No, then it would be like a Latin class. Forget it. You only have to know the, these three examples. The genitive case of Gemini, the genitive case of Taurus, and the genitive case of Orion. So Orion, Alpha Orionis, means Betelgeuse is the brightest star in the constellation Orion. Aldebaran, Aldebaran's other name is Alpha Tauri, which means the brightest star in the constellation Taurus. Pollux's other name is Beta Geminorum, which means the second brightest star in the constellation Gemini. Here are the first five. These are the common Greek alphabet. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. It kind of resembles our English letter A, B, C, D, E, except the C is a G for them, for the Greeks. A, B, C, D, E. So... Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon is their E. Okay, so let's practice a question here. If I were to ask this on the test, here is the, the way the question would be worded. What would be the formal name of the fourth brightest star in the constellation Gemini? That would be the kind of a question that I might ask you on the quiz. What is the 
formal name of the fourth brightest star in the constellation Gemini. Of course, I will have different choices available for you there to fill in. So how would you be able to get that? You have to know what? In your mind, you have to know the order of the Greek alphabet. A, B, C, D, E. So the D is the fourth letter, right? So delta is the fourth letter, okay? And then what else would you have to know? Gemini, the genitive case is what? Here, Geminorum, okay? Let's practice another one. What's the formal name of the fifth brightest star in the constellation Taurus? Uh, write it down. What's the formal name of the fifth brightest star in the constellation Taurus? And the answer is Epsilon, Epsilon, Tori. Don't put Epsilon Taurus. Tori is the genitive case of Taurus. You have to use the genitive case. So which genitive cases do you have to know? You have to know Orion, genitive case is Orionis. Taurus, Tori, Gemini, Geminorum, those three. If you know those three, I'm not going to ask you other ones, okay? Okay, now let's talk a little bit quickly about what the assignment is, the constellation worksheet assignment.